Hello everyone! This is Jennifer Stay with Coloring Bliss and another impromptu live swatching event. I was just about to sit down and swatch the Mighty Fabric Castells and I thought you guys might like to swatch along with me. So here we are ready to swatch together. I've got my swatching catalog, Swatch Bliss Volume 1 all ready to go and we've got uh, three different lines of fabric castell water soluble watercolor pencils to swatch together um, this morning is it still morning yeah it's still morning here in utah <laughs> so um yeah i thought i'd just jump on and let you enjoy the swatching bliss with me um, before I get started, I thought it would be fun to just thumb through how far I've gotten so far with my swatching of the watercolor pencils. I'm working on swatching my entire collection of watercolor pencils for an upcoming video here on YouTube all about the battle of the watercolor pencils. So we've got um, the Artezas. I'm swatching them alphabetically according to my collection. Where is my other piece of paper? I'll have to look around for that. Where did I put it? Um, oh, I handed it to you, Steve, that sheet protector page. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And I need to turn off my phone and make sure my ringer's off. So, okay, good. All right, so um, I've got about 27, actually it's 26, because one of the Derwents are not... Um, currently available anymore so I'm not going to include it in the battle of the watercolor pencils so oh we've got some people coming in hello you guys um, we've got Bethann and Shiitake Prince and Fern and Ebony and Camilla and Chris and Axon and Pla hello everyone welcome to our swatching fun <laughs> So I was just going to flip through the pages so you can see how different every all these different lines are turning out. Um, the first ones we swatched together alphabetically was Arteza's. Um, that's still Arteza here. Those are the experts. And then we moved into Arteza Woodless. That's these ones right here. And then we moved into Brunzil. Um, there were two lines for Brunzil, Expression and Design. And we haven't activated any of these with water yet. The plan is um, for the filming purposes, I'm going to swatch them all dry. And then I'm gonna turn on the camera and we'll activate them all with water. And it should be this really pretty, very satisfying video of all of these swatches getting activated with water. And then here's the Karen Dash, the Mighty Karen Dash, um, Museum Aquarelle and the Supercolor Soft, um, these two um, sections here. And then I did Castle Art, that's this section here, and then I finished up Castle Art here. And then last night I did Crayola right here. And then I moved into Derwent, um, and that was really fun last night. Um, I didn't go live to do the Derwent. I was too tired last night, so I just sat down and kind of did my own swatching. So here is the Derwent. Now, what I want you to see is kind of the difference um, in intensity. This is the ink tents we're about to look at. Um, so look at the swatches dry. Of course, this is dry. Um, but look at the color payoff here in the intensity, the saturation of color here with the castle art. And then now when I flip the page, you're going to be knocked off your, your chair, <laughs> at least I was, <laughs> by the saturation of the ink tents. Look at that. It's like someone turned the color volume up. The ink tents are just amazing. I can't wait to hit these with water. Of course, we're not doing that right now during this live event. Um, but anyway, just the, the dry color payoff of the ink tents is amazing. Look at the difference between like this page and that page. It's just like someone turns the volume up. It's amazing. Anyway, um, so that's the ink tents. And then here's the Derwent Metallics. The Derwent Graphitint, which is um, not watercolor. So we've got a few things here, the Derwent Ink Tents, the Derwent Metallic, and the Derwent Graphitint. Those three are not watercolor. They're gonna be sort of a, a rogue 
um, entrant into our watercolor battle. <laughs> and then we've got the Derwent watercolors right here. And now we're moving into the Fabric Castells. So um, that's why I thought we'd come on and let you join me as we swatch some watercolor um, pencils from the Fabric Castell line. So I have three contenders. The first ones we're going to swatch together are the Gold Faber Aquas, and then we'll swatch my collection of Albert Durer's, and then I have some really cool ones to show you right here, and these are the Albert Durer Magnus pencils. So we'll save these to last, um, so if you want to hang around for the fun reveal of what's inside these tins, you're going to be excited. At least I'm really excited about this tin. I think these might be the ones I'm most excited. The whole battle, these are the ones. Have you seen these yet, oh, Steve? Really? I'm not even going to open them right now. Oh, yeah, I've seen them. You've seen them? Mm -hmm. Oh, these are really fun. <laughs> so we'll set those to the side and we'll start right here with the gold Faber Aquas. That's the plan. Okay, I'm going to look over at the comments real quick and say hi to everybody. Um, I have the Faber Castell Polys, but I bought the Cabern. Oh, yeah, the Karen Dash Super Colors. They went down really pretty. I'm really excited to hit them with water and see how they do. I'm glad to hear you like them, Bethann. Um, we've got Lindsay from Atlanta. Hello. Um, Brenda's excited about an afternoon live stream. Yeah, I thought it'd be kind of fun. We've got Carlene from Washington State. Um, Jessica from New Jersey that's sheltered in place. Yep, I'm sheltered in place too. Brenda in Connecticut. Um, let's see. Um, Let's see, Jessica, I'm a therapist, but still going to lose my mind with the rest of the states. We're all going to need therapy after this. Yeah, I think you're right, Annie. Oh, yeah. Let's see. You're glad that we're here live. I'm glad, too. Okay, so don't forget to hit a thumbs up if you're glad that I'm live. And again, if you're if you're wanting to share this out, that would be helpful to me. Um, if you know anybody who needs a little distraction, you could share it out. So these are the gold fabbers. They're more like um, a student line um, of their Faber Castell pencils. And then after we do these 12, we'll get right into the Albert Durs, which I'm more excited about. The Albert Durs and the Albert Dur Magnus, which I'm really, really excited about. So um, this is what you get when you buy the aqua, the gold fabber aquas. You get all kinds of fun tips and tricks. Um, in lots of different languages, but mostly it's the images that are fun um, to give you ideas of how to use them. So that's fun. Okay, let's see what these look like. Um, number 166. Yeah, they're just like the other gold fabbers. There's no color names, just numbers on them, but it's a nice pencil, decent pencil. All right, I'm going to zoom down just a little bit closer so you can see the colors come onto the paper. Good. Okay. So, it's Wednesday. That means we have a live event later today as well. I'm excited about doing that. Um, but my other goal with all of you today is to get at least the Faber Castells swatched. Um, because I'm trying to get everything ready to film this um, big video, the Battle of the Watercolor Pencils. It's going to be so much fun to have this official video where we can really compare all these brands head to head. It's going to be so much fun! Uh, Rose is here with me. She's sleeping on her pillow. I decided not to worry about getting makeup on or worry about all the cameras and everything. Um, so that's why we're just doing the straight down. I do have this camera available if we want to switch over from time to time to show you a little bit of a different angle. I know the straight down angle my hand gets in the way sometimes. So we can flip over to this angle if we want to so you can see. So the idea is I'm only filling in half of the swatch and then um, when I film the water activation I'll get the swatch wet and pull the, the pigment across the rest of the swatch. So that's why we're only swatching half of this. 
and we are swatching on a watercolor paper into the swatch book so it should do um, the most what am I trying to say this should give the best advantage to all these pencils possible being on watercolor paper and you can purchase a book like this if you're interested from coloring bliss um, you can get them printed on watercolor paper or marker paper or color pencil paper or even like a mixed media type paper um, it's like a really nice cardstock type paper that's really good for all kinds of coloring media Okay, I'll swatch a couple more and then I'll look over at the chat and see if you guys have any questions about what I'm up to. Oh. It's nice to be back into a line of pencils that are a little um, more high quality than... Oh, that tip broke. That's okay. Some of these are really sharp. Oh, that's a pretty color, 125. I wonder what the name of that one is. I'm always curious why they pick the colors they pick in a really small set like this when it's just 12. Why did they pick this color? I think we talked a little bit about that when we were swatching the Karen Dash 12. Why did they pick those particular 12 pencils? Because um, I was confused by the red they picked in that set of 12. Ooh, that tip broke too. Hmm. Interesting. One reason I like this, these swatch books that I help Steve design is we've given a section over here where you can make notes. So I've been making notes about each line as I've been swatching them. So as I go back and review how I felt about each set, I can remember, like for instance, one of the leads broke here for the graphitants, um, and that the tin needed tape to stay closed, and there are a lot of crumbs as I was swatching these. So I'm making notes like that as I go, because uh, there's no way I'll remember 12 sets later how I felt about a particular set. Oh, that's working really well. Okay. So I think once the fabric castells are done, I am about halfway through my collection of watercolor um, pencils or water soluble pencils is really the more technical term what we're doing here because not all of these are watercolor. I think there's uh, or that are technically not watercolor. Three? I can't remember. Most of them are watercolor though. Ah, that one broke too. Okay, I was gonna look over at the <laughs> comments and I forgot. Let's see here. Um, <sighs> let's see, this is a wee bit of therapy, Lindsay says, yeah. Um, we've got, um, Meshla, I think is how you say your name, from Oxford, Georgia. Welcome. Um, we've got Annie says, I love the gold fabric. They're actually not too bad for my hands. Oh, that's awesome. Two live events in one day, Lindsay says. Yeah, it's going to be lots of filming today. I'm not sure if this is too early or too late for you, Jennifer, but this is the first time I can watch you, and it's not 3 in the morning. Oh, I'm so glad. Um Hi everyone, glad this is a live event. I'm glad you're here. Hi all. That's the brand of watercolor pencils I began with in 1990. Oh, that's cool. Um, I got my Coloring Bliss sketchbook right before all of the shutdowns. I adore it. Your mixed paper is fabulous, Lindsay says. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad you got it before everything shut down. We're still um, shipping here at Coloring Bliss. So if you're interested in ordering, um, and we're being really careful to make sure that anybody working in our print shop is healthy. And so we're not spreading any germs, but of course everything we're shipping is paper. 
so um, any viruses or anything would die by the time it gets to you anyway so um, that's good I've thought about that the other day I was like is it safe for us to ship things out um, even though we're being careful about people who are working for us um, making sure they're all healthy and everything I was trying to figure out if it's even safe you know don't want to spread germs from Utah to the rest of the country um, but the I did some reading about um, what we're shipping out and it should be fine from what the science is saying of course the science seems to be changing every day but that's all right and we're just doing our best right okay we're almost done with the gold fabbers and then we get to go into the Albert doors I'm so excited and I'm really curious to see if I feel a difference between these gold fabbers and the Albert doors Okay, the graphitants were really fun to swatch. I had a lot of fun doing those. Um, and I, when I was swatching them, I needed to sharpen a lot of them. So I pulled out all my, oh, that tip broke too. I pulled out all my hand sharpeners that I use all the time for my color pencils and sharpened all my graphitant through them so that they all would get a little graphite love because it's good on your sharpeners to send graphite through them from time to time to to clean the blades keep them working well so that worked out well so I need to make a note that all the little tips were breaking <laughs> okay let's see how um, opaque the white is on this guy here that's a pretty good opaque white look how opaque the graphite the graphitant one was I was pretty surprised by that how, gra how opaque it was we'll see what it does when it gets wet okay we did it we got through the gold fabbers thank you Faber Castell gold faber Okay, now that can go into my box of pencils I have officially swatched. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, now we're moving on to the Albrecht Durers, which I have in this case right here. And the reason I don't have them in their official Albrecht Durer case is because I've been collecting these open stock. So, let's see. Let's see, we got Lynn from Ontario. And the names of the different colors are. All I've got are the numbers on those ones. Hi everyone, great surprise, Victoria says. Um, Annie says that's a great tip for the sharpeners. Yeah, graphite's really great on your, like these little sharpeners. Graphite really cleans them well. Okay, so I've been collecting my Albrecht Durer's open stock slowly, a little bit at a time. So here I've got them all written out, the ones that I have, and you can see this is my collection of Albrecht Durers, and I have them organized in threes for the tritones. Um, so when we created the tritones for the polychromos, our sets of light, mediums, and darks, um, we that's when we discovered there's a whole bunch of videos here on YouTube where I share with you my journey of learning that the Faber-Castell has a color system where the colors match from line to line so when I learned that the polychromo colors um, work for the Albert Durer colors I wanted to buy all um, all of the 36 Albert Durer pencils that work with 36 polychromos that we've chosen for the tritones. So that's what I've got here. I've got all 36 all in their little tritone sets um, that I've finally got my collection done. And then I've got four random ones here that um, I had been collecting before I learned about the Faber-Castell color system. So that's what this is right here. So I've written down all their numbers over here and they're ready to swatch. 
Okay, let's see. Victoria says, great nails. Oh, thank you. Um, on her phone says, hi guys, how y'all doing in this rough time of isolation? Um, well, personally, Honor, <laughs> I'm kind of like a roller coaster. I'm kind of used to isolation, personally. I, I'm chronically ill, so uh, my life really hasn't changed a lot. Um, some of my plans had to change, um, which was frustrating because Steve and I had some um, big plans. Oh, these feel so much better. Can I just say for a moment how much better these feel compared to the last, to the gold fabers. They feel smoother, um, silkier. That's a good word, silkier. Anyway, um, we had some plans that had to be changed like the rest of the world, right? And then the other thing that's been more difficult than I expected was, um, I don't know. I, I, it's just um, the worry, I guess, of getting sick and um, because I'm more high at risk, I'm worried and wanting everybody to take this seriously and that kind of thing. It's stressful and other things have been stressing me. And so, yeah, lifestyle wise, nothing really has changed for me. Just lots of other pressures, you know. So I'll be glad when the science catches up with what's going on so we have some better understanding of what's happening. That's what I wish would happen, that we could all snap our fingers and the science would catch up, right? That would be fantastic. All right. So you're going to see these swatched in the trios, in the tritones, because that's the way they're organized in my case here. And if you're interested in the tritones, there's a couple resources we have for you for Faber-Castell. The first thing is if you want the tritones, my, my three color blends, you can come and get those. They are um, part of our paid membership but it's only five bucks and you get access to not just the fabric castell tritones but a whole bunch of others the derwent ink tents um, prismacolor um, tombow there's a whole bunch of them and uh, on top of that you get like 500 coloring pages is it 500 now i don't know how many there's a lot so your five bucks goes a long way plus it supports my channel keeps me making videos all that good stuff so that's one way to get all this information. The other way to get this, um, if you um, want just a good swatch chart that you can download for Faber-Castell Polychromos, which would also apply for Albert Durer, um, you can come on over and become a free member. All you need to do is, um, I think to be a free member, you just have to give us your email, which we protect and we don't share. It's just me and Steve here. For coloring bliss and then you can get tons of free downloads including a really awesome polychromos swatch chart that you can download and enjoy okay 171 is next these are swatching down just really pretty really easy I'm excited to show you guys the Albert Durer Magnus. They are amazing. Very unique pencil. And actually, they are the most expensive of all the pencils I will be testing for the Battle of the Watercolor pencils. So I'm excited to show all of you that are popping in for this live stream. You guys get a sneak peek of the most expensive pencil that will be in the battle. Okay. I need to peek over at the chat. Um, let's see. 
people are saying they're trying not to argue with their boyfriend. <laughs> I think you're not the only one that's um, having some arguing issues at home. <laughs> uh, oh, you're working on child's custody. Good job. I'm taking Jen's advice, Lindsay says, and taking stock of all my art supplies. Found a brand new 24 set of Prismacolors. That's awesome. Well, that's really cool. And he likes number 171. Yeah, isn't that a pretty green? Such a pretty green. And these three greens together, they just sing together. Oh my goodness, when you blend these three together. Ooh, gorgeous. This deep green matched up with that bright green gives you such a pretty contrast, like in a leaf. Oh, it's really pretty. Okay. Make sure I've got the right number matched up. Look at, I mean, you know you've got a good quality pencil in your hand when the light tones color out without much work. That's what I'm discovering. It's in the light tones that the story is told <laughs> with pigmentation. In the cheaper brands, the light tones just fall flat really bad. They, they do fine in the mid-tones and the dark tones. Um, as far as pigmentation goes, they fall flat in other ways. This one needs sharpening. But um, it's the light tones where the cheap pencils just cannot compete. Lindsay says she loves it when colors sing too. I was telling her these three together when they when you blend them they just sing. <laughs> She's like, I like that too. Okay, let's see if this tip breaks. I'm leaning pretty hard. It didn't break. See those um what's the last ones I just did? Joanne? No, the um gold fabbers. Those tips were breaking. Were? Not like this kind of break. Look at all these broken tips, you guys, from yesterday's swatching. Isn't that sad? I was telling, I can't remember, I posted this picture on Instagram and our Facebook, and I was telling somebody that I was literally having mini anxiety attacks. Like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not um, exaggerating. Like, uh, I would break out in sweats and, like, I feel my heart rush and like that like it was what? giving me like cuz I <laughs> this is like heartbreaking when this happens <laughs> like that's a lot of wasted product now these are water soluble so I'm not throwing these away because you can activate these with water and paint with them so this is not going to go to waste so that's not what I'm talking about when the tips are breaking what I'm talking about is when they're really sharp and you lean into them and that little tip pops off which is not as much of a waste I'm not having many anxiety attacks over that <laughs> but it's interesting to me that the Albrecht Durers you can sharpen them super sharp and lean into them and that one didn't snap that's interesting to me whatever they're doing um, between their two lines the Albrecht Durer and the Gold Faber is giving that much more strength to the core. Oh, look at that. Ooh, that is a beautiful combo. <sighs> I got distracted talking about breaking tips. So I need to go back and make a note of that because I don't think I did. La, 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 la. Okay, let's come back over here and say um, the sharp tips snapped. I think that's a good difference between the lead broke. Like over here in the Derwents, there's a couple. Um, the Derwent Metallics, I had two leads break. 
the Derwent ink um, Graphitint I had one break and I think in the ink tents I had one break. Derwent's were <laughs> they were rough man we had some rough times yesterday. <laughs> okay let's see um that's a nice sharpener you got there. Oh, this sharpener is fantastic. Um, it's a, I love this little sharpener. Um, and next time I need to sharpen a pencil, I'll demonstrate the proper way to use this type of sharpener, whether it's this little guy or this little guy. I'll show you how to do that. But I love this one, and I love being able to see the, the shavings, because I collect shavings. I've got a new jar. Look how pretty this jar is. This was actually a, a stuffed olives jar and I, I told everybody when we got these stuffed olives to save me this jar. It's adorable and I want it for pencil shavings. So yeah, I have officially started filling this jar with my beautiful pencil shavings. So they go from here into here. Isn't it beautiful? I can't wait to put like a ribbon around it or something. I don't know. It's so pretty. So yeah, this was a really good little sharpener. Okay, back on track. Let me read some, some comments real quick. Um, let's see. So before the Corona, I used to work in art supply stores. I tried everything. Gold fabric, aqua were breaking out easier than children pencils. Ooh, yeah, the pig pigmentation was top notch. Interesting. Um, Lindsay says, now that's a gorgeous color. Aren't these beautiful? Oh, beautiful. Okay, let's move on now <laughs> to the next trio, which is 146. Okay. Oh, just love these um, Albert Durr pencils. I can't wait to activate all these with water and then do my testing. I have a special worksheet that I've created for the Battle of the Watercolor Pencils where we're going to put these pencils through specific tests and see how they perform. Um, because there's lots of variables, not just price. Oh, did I do the wrong one? No, I'm okay. Not just price and not just like how they look dry versus how they look wet. Those are just a couple of the variables that I want to test. So I've created a really cool worksheet and we'll go through and test them all and then um, I'll give you all this really awesome information and then hopefully it will help you make a really good decision about what line of water soluble pencils are right for you. Beautiful, look at that. Oof, oof. Purdy, purdy. Okay, next row. Uh, let's see, how can we do this? Maybe go this way with my case. Okay, this is the next one. Oh, I wrote them. I was trying to go light, medium, and dark, but I wrote them dark, medium, light on this one. Oh well. Life goes on. Okay. These are putting off some crumbs, which like I've said before, if you've been with me during this swatching adventure, the crumbs don't bother me too much as long as it's not excessive amounts of crumbs because we're just going to activate with water anyway. So I'm just kind of watching the amount of crumbs. I'm going to note that there are minimal crumbs so far. Um, so that is of note, but not of worry. Does that make sense? If these were color pencils, normal standard color pencils, crumbs would be more, <coughs> more noteworthy we don't want a whole lot of crumbs going on because it's just wax and they don't they can get smeary on our papers and make a mess where with with watercolor pencils the crumbs like I said are just going to get activated 
So as long as there are just minimal amounts, they shouldn't make a mess. They should just add to the blend and it should be fine. All right, now, one, three, eight. Nope. And I'm using for the black ink that I'm making all the numbers and all the notes with, I'm using this Micron PN pen um, because it's archival and it won't, um, it's permanent. It won't be activated when I hit all these with water. So we won't have any bleeding issues. Okay, next is 137. Oh, look at these colors. And they just color down so lovely. Okay, after I finish this trio, I'll check comments again if you have any questions for me. Or comments. Don't forget to hit that little thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and that little bell notification really does help. Um, if I go live like this, um, it will notify you so you can come and join me or at least pop in and see what I'm up to if you're interested or not in the content, the live event. See if you want to hang out. I've been enjoying more of my YouTube, um, the people I follow. I've been doing a few more live events, so it's been kind of fun. I can, while I'm working, listen and watch what they're doing. Okay, let's see. Tammy likes my jar, and so does Lindsay. It's pretty cool. Blue and pinks are Jacqueline's favorite. Yes, I love the purples, which are just, you know, brother and sister to blue and pink. All right, good. I'm not missing too much. 119 is our next color, which brings us to a pinky color. Magenta, light magenta. 119. Make sure I'm doing that right. Yep. Such a pretty color. I'm going to be sad to go back to a less expensive brand. <laughs> Let's see, what do I have to do after Faber-Castell? General's brand, uh, Kimberly watercolor pencils. Oh, be interesting to see how they perform after working with the mighty Faber Castell. Okay, one, three, four. Yep. Oh, look at that color. So impressive. <laughs> So pretty. So what projects are all of you working on? This is 194. This is probably one of my biggest projects right now is trying to get this swatching done so I can film the Battle of the Watercolor Pencils. That's kind of an extra project. And then I've got my 14 day coloring objects challenge that we're doing as a coloring bliss community. And then I've got my bliss partners that we're doing, um, learning how to blend better. One, three, two. And I need to work on drawing some new coloring pages for spring and Easter. Well, that's what I've got going on. It's nice to have a lot of different projects so I have some fun things to wake up to every day. One, two, one. It's kind of the secret to um, living this lifestyle, this isolated 
um, endurance type lifestyle is have a lot of different projects that when you wake up in the morning you can think well at least I have this fun project going on even though things are hard at least I get to go swatch these really fun beautiful colors today two one seven oh see what I mean about even the light color look how much pigment there is in that light color you don't have to like really search and look to find what color that is that's the sign of a really high quality pencil you expect to see lots of pigment in a dark color that's easy I think because even the cheap brands can can get make that happen okay now we're moving on to 109 all right, let's see. Libby says, hi, glad I found you. I'm glad you're here. How many water watercolor sets do I, wait, well, how many watercolor sets do you have to do yet? Okay, Tammy, let's see. After the Faber-Castells today, which after these, I have one more to share with you guys, the, the awesome Magnus that I'm excited to show you. Then we do Generals, Koinor, Low, Pentel, Prismacolor, South Sun, Spectrum Noir, Two Statelers, Windsor and Newton, and Xenacolor. That's what I have left. Um, so far, these are my favorites. Love the colors in the last three rows. Yeah, Lindsay, um, the Albert Durs are definitely my favorite so far. Um, we'll see when we hit them with water, though, right? Um, let's see. Um, Tammy's coloring ivy and inky cover to cover since oh that's awesome cover to cover in that book that's cool um, Carol says I would love to try the Albert Durer's but I just bought some Karen Dash oh yeah well those are really good too Carol so you're awesome that you got those <laughs> I'm working in world of flowers right now oh cool Tammy's using Prismas and Arteza pencils Ooh, those are beautiful pencils and Libby's doing her 14 day color challenge and a double page from World of Flowers. Oh, that's cool. And let's see, Lindsay says, I just started World of Flowers too. That's awesome. That's so cool. Okay, 109. Here we are. Oh, look at that color. Yeah, I need to do today's um, 14 day color challenge. I haven't done today's yet. What is today's? Let me see. Oh, the strawberry. Yep, I need to do the strawberry. I was thinking about coloring it in a rainbow with my alcohol markers and gradating the color and trying to get all of the 12 colors of the color wheel in one strawberry. That's what I was trying to think about. And then I was thinking maybe coloring the background in black because I haven't done a black background yet. That was my thinking for the 14 day coloring challenge. Look how much fun all the, the glitter in the different squares. Oh, so much fun. This has been a really fun challenge. We'll see what I decide to do when it's finally time to sit down and color it. All right, 115 is next. Okay. And then I also have this little watercolored feather that I'm working on that I need to finish. I'll show that to you too while I'm at it. This one right here. I've got I finished this one a couple days ago and I want to add some black lines to it with a micron pen and add some like little tiny details to it so that's another project that I want to finish up and then hang that on the back wall is what I'm thinking with that one uh, lots of fun things to look forward to every day that's the key. That's the key to staying happy when you're stuck at home for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Okay, 188. Okay. Almost to the bottom of our Albert Durer's, and then I get to show you the most expensive pencils in the Battle of the Watercolor Pencils. The Faber-Castell Albert Durer Magnus Pencils. I thought maybe the Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarelles would end up being the most expensive. But when I did my price checks, it ended up being the ones I'm going to show you here in just a minute. I'm excited to show you. So pretty. Look at that pretty yellow. Glad I've got a set of fine liners before the shutdown, Tammy says. Lindsay says, I am new. Um, I have and have a thick accent. I've been enjoying YouTube videos of my countrymen to help my with my homesickness, so I'm glad. My local AC Moore is closing and I found this set of 24 for less than $10. Oh, that's awesome. $111. It'll be interesting to see how stores bounce back after everybody can start shopping again. Is it going to be this big, almost like Christmas-like rush where everybody goes out and buys all the things they've been wanting to buy for the last month? Or will everybody be sort of gun-shy and worried and want to save their money? I don't know. Be interesting to watch. You know, this is the first pencil that I have felt like is a little underpigmented, and it's one of the darker ones. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay. All right, here's a really light one. So most likely this one's going to be underwhelming, but we'll see. Yeah, can hardly see it. In watercolor, these lighter pencils are almost not, not even worth, because <laughs> it's the white of the paper we're using, but you can use these to help tint down a color mix that color in, you know. Okay, next is 185, and then we have this row of kind of random colors that aren't part of the tritone sets. Oh, do you guys like to swatch? It's one of my favorite things to do because it's so relaxing and there's really no pressure as far as like right or wrong and you get to enjoy your art tools you get to enjoy all the pretty colors you get to practice um, gradient coloring <laughs> it's actually really good practice for control of your tools, you get to really know your um, supplies. Okay, this pencil definitely needs sharpening. This is number 264, and I promised you that I would teach you the proper method for sharpening your pencils. So here we go. If you want to watch, you can look up and see how to properly sharpen a pencil with a handheld sharpener. So this would apply whether you're using this kind of sharpener or this kind of sharpener, it doesn't really matter. The idea is that you want to hold the pencil still and move the sharpener around the pencil. That's the idea. So I typically hold the pencil with my right hand, um, but either way, whatever is most comfortable to you. 
again the idea is to hold the pencil still and move the sharpener around this helps protect the core and keep that pencil stable and move it around. Now you want to use a handheld sharpener that's really sharp. Typically a German blade is what I've experienced is the best. So this Kuhm um, brand, they make um, really good German blade sharpeners. Also this one here is the Alvin Brass Bullet. It's really heavy so it feels really good in the hand and it's also a German blade. I've never had to sharpen or replace this blade. I just periodically sharpen a graphite pencil in it and that cleans off the blade and keeps it really good and sharp. So Coombe's a good brand, the Alvin Brass Bullet's a good brand, and then after that I just recommend looking for a good German blade on your sharpener. And then again you just hold the pencil still and move that sharpener around it and that's all there is to it. And I just check ever so often to make sure I'm not over sharpening it. And then I collect my my shavings. Um, that's why I bought this cute little jar because it's just adorable. And then I keep them all in pretty jars and I display them. And um, we find different ways to use the shavings, but for the most part, I just like to collect them because I think they're beautiful and they inspire me. And yeah, so that's how to sharpen a pencil. I hate these little UPC labels they put on pencils. Why? Why do you do this to my pencil? I don't want your sticker on my pencil. Go away. Okay. All right, let me check my comments here. Um... Is Steve here? He's comes. He's coming in and out of the room. He's got other projects he's working on too. Um, let's see. We get people from all over the East Coast. Says Tammy. Susan, I just bought the Albert Durer full set. That's awesome. Um, but you have to wait weeks to get it because Dick Blick has them on back order. Oh. But you have your ink tents. I will, oh, on Saturday you're getting your ink tents, Susan. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll have to show you how the ink tent swatch has turned out. And that's going to make you even more excited for Saturday to come. Okay, let's see if this little tip breaks. Like they were on the gold fabbers. Nope. I really leaned on that too. No break. That's pretty interesting. Okay. If you can hear Rose, she's digging on her pillow. That's the sound you're hearing. I would switch the camera, but we don't have her camera on. Okay, that's 264. This one needs sharpening a little bit. No, I think we'll get away with it. One, two, nine. Or just swatching. If I was coloring something, I'd probably sharpen it up. But so we just have three more pencils to swatch, and then I will show you the amazing, most expensive of all the pencils in my Battle of the Watercolor pencils: the mighty Faber Castell Albert Durer Magnus. This pencil definitely needs sharpening. This one has been used where you use a wet brush against the tip. So it definitely needs some sharpening. It's looking pretty sad. Oh, it has a terrible sticker on it too. Okay. Yeah, Camilla Rose was working really hard. Um, Mona says she has the ink tents but hasn't used them yet. Well, maybe all of this swatching and the videos I have planned will inspire you, Mona. Martin says, hi, Jennifer. I am really liking your channel. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, Martin. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying the channel. Okay. One, two, five. I'm going to lean in again and see if that tip breaks. Nope. Hmm. It's very interesting. 
I wish I knew all the science behind like the recipes of the pencils. All right, one more to swatch and then I'll show you guys the mighty Albrecht Durer Magnus. Okay. So that's my full collection of the Albrecht Durers. I don't have the full collection, like I said earlier, just a few that I've been collecting open stock. I think I have about 40 of them now. Okay. That's my collection. So yeah, minimal crumbs. That's what I'm gonna write for my notes. Minimal crumbs. So, Cause some of them aren't doing any crumbs. Some of them are really crummy and then some of them are like these. Let me show you, I'll bring it up closer. You can see like a tiny bit of crumbing happening which, like I said, doesn't bother me when it's just a small amount, but it is worth noting. Okay, now let me put these away and I will show you. Tammy says, how's Rose doing? She's doing awesome. She is such a sweetheart and so fun to have. She's got a birthday coming. And, oh, she's just a sweetheart. I just bought my fabric castell water pencils 36 still brand new martin says oh that's awesome um ink tense is different than all the others as it is ink not watercolor yeah they are very different so in my battle of the watercolor pencils i have a few that are sort of rogue we've got um technically i should be calling this the battle of the water soluble pencils but um I think it would confuse people if I named this the water soluble pencil battle. So I'll explain that when I do the, the formal video that um, there are a, a couple rogue sets. Um, so we've got Arteza Swatched, um, Arteza Woodless, we've got Brunzils, two kinds of Brunzils Swatched, two kinds of Karen Dash Swatched, and then the Castle Arts are Swatched. Um, and then the Crayola, and then here comes the ink tent. So the ink tents are technically an, an ink, is what they call it, um, in pencil form, and then you get them wet, and they're supposed to be permanent once they have dried after you've activate them fully. So I'll explain that when we do the formal video. But because they're water soluble and because people will be like, why didn't you include the ink tents? I have to include them in this battle or people will think I'm, I've left out a major player in the water soluble pencil world. So they, like if you look at the colors here um, in these pencils and then when I switch the page, look how intense dry these pencils are, the Derwent Ink Tents. It's amazing. Their colors are just stellar. And when they are hit with water, it's amazing. So then here's a couple more that aren't technically watercolor. So I'll explain that again when I do the formal video. This is the Metallics, Derwent Metallic. And then these are the Derwent Graphitint. So these are actually graphite pen pencils that are tinted beautiful these are so beautiful and then we get back into watercolor here here's the derwent watercolors and then here we get into the gold faber aqua that i just swatched with all of you at the beginning of this video and then we just finished swatching my 40 um albrick drawers and now now i get to show you the most expensive pencils in the battle of the watercolor pencils which is the Albrecht Durer Magnus pencils. These boys right here. So I'm going to reveal them. Are you ready? I got to take a drink of water though. <laughs> Whoa. Um, let's see. I, I'm going to say your name wrong. Sergio. Sergio asked me if I'm at least halfway done. Um, let's see. I am... Um, you can kind of see my list there. Um, Faber-Castell's right here. So yeah, I'm about halfway done now. 
Um, my problem is when I hit the South Sun, that really inexpensive brand by, um, I think it's Hero. It's a Guang, Guang, Guanghui South Sun. I have 150 pencils to swatch in that group. That's my biggest set. So yeah, I'm about halfway done now as far as groups of pencils to do. I've got the Generals, the Kohinoor, Low, Pentel, Prismacolor, South Sun, Spectrum Noir, two from Statler, Windsor & Newton, and Xenicolor. And then I've got them all swatched. So here we go. Are you guys ready? Oh, everybody's saying happy birthday. Thank you, you guys. All right, here it comes. Your peek, you guys get a sneak peek at the most expensive of all the pencils that we will be having in the Battle of the Watercolor. That's my garage door you can hear. Okay, um, Surju. Oh, that's how you say it. Okay, I'll probably forget if you come back on another live event, so I apologize. Surju, that's cool. I like your name. Here we go. This is what the Faber-Castell Albrecht Durs look like. The Magnus pencils. Ready? Dun, 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 dun. Aren't these amazing? Look how huge they are. Okay, let me get one of the, the standard Albrecht Durs so you can see the difference in... Uh, I'll hold up two here so you can see the size difference. Isn't that amazing? Look at the size of that pencil. It's huge. <laughs> Aren't they amazing? So this set of 12 comes also with a really big number 10 round brush, watercolor brush. A beautiful number 10 watercolor brush that I haven't even gotten wet yet. So it still has the the glue or whatever they put on it to protect the bristles so I'm not gonna break that I'll have to go wash out that glue but isn't it beautiful <laughs> oh they are so pretty oh <laughs> okay so let's let's look and see what we get with this okay you get um it looks like they're pretty standard Albert Durer leaflet with some um, Magnus information, um, all kinds of really cool tips on how to use them wet and how to use them dry um, and how to use them with mixed media. And then it shows what colors they're available in. They're in, available in a very limited amount of colors. And the idea is you get a whole lot of pigment in one pencil. So you get the idea, you know, is um, lots of qu um, quantity for the amount of money you spend on them. But isn't that, I mean, it feels so good in your hand. It's such a, I, I don't know, it brings back childhood memories and oh, they're just beautiful. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I, I just, I'm just so happy. <laughs> okay, so let's, I've never colored with them yet, you guys. These, I've opened them up, taken them out of the plastic, drooled over them, and put them back down. So let's go ahead and use them. I need to reorganize them a little bit so that they're in my typical swatching order. So let's do that real quick. White is usually last. And then I have been putting yellow next to brown. So let's go like this. Oh, they're just so fun. How do they smell? Oh, they smell like a dream. <laughs> yeah, I love the smell of a good color pencil. Oh, these are just amazing. Okay, that's better. Now, if we probably like that is what they're going to end up being and then take these guys and just flip and go like that that's better okay then we need their color name to come up top so I can write their color names down now one of the reasons I also got the Magnus besides the fact that I wanted them 
was because in my Albrecht Durer set I didn't have a black and I didn't have a white and I don't have any browns. Um, just for comparing how the Albrecht Durers work um, for when we do the tests. So that's another reason why I wanted this set. That's how I justified them because oh boy oh boy oh boy are these expensive. Let me tell you how much they are. <laughs> All right, these bad boys are $2.40 a pencil. And this kit right here, I believe, was $28.80 for this set when I checked the price last. Of course, their prices vary, right? Depending on the day and the sale and everything. So that was when I checked. Okay enough drooling let's let's swatch <laughs> okay let's write this down here we've got albrecht durer albrecht durer now one of the issues is going to be how to um sharpen these these boys magnus and I've got the 12 set. I think it comes in sets of 12, 24, and then I think they're available open stock. Okay, then we've got, we'll start with the green. I've got oh, 163, 171, 219, 115, 107, 187, 177, 199, and 101. Okay. Judith says that's not a bad price for a great product. I agree. Um, I don't mind spending money on a good product, so we'll see how they do actual practical use, right? Okay, that I just used an alcohol marker to swatch out, um, to black in the swatch where the white is going to go, because we want to see how opaque that white is. Now, one of the questions I have is I have like this Coom sharpener that has a bigger hole a two-hold comb sharpener, and I'm wondering if the big hole is going to work for these. I think it will. Oh, good. I was kind of depending on that. Okay, but I don't want to sharpen it yet. Let's swatch a couple, and then we can try. <laughs> okay. Oh, I may need all 24 of these, because this is really neat. <laughs> These are pretty. I haven't even colored with them yet. Jennifer, you don't need them all yet. Calm down. Okay, so do we have any duplicates? 171 is a duplicate. 110. I know I, when I looked at it, I knew there would be a couple duplicates, but for the most part, what I was excited about getting was the whites, the blacks, and these browns, because I don't have any of those colors. Um in my current set of Albrecht doors. Okay, let's see how this feels to color with this, this giant thing. So they have, I wanted to tell you how big the core was, because this is what is amazing to me. A 5.3 millimeter core. Isn't that amazing? 5.3 millimeters. This guy here, the normal Albert Durer's, is just a 3.8 millimeter. That's how much more stuff you get. I was worried it would feel really awkward in my hand, but honestly, it doesn't feel that much. Like, I don't feel like this is really weird. I don't feel like that. Like when you're coloring with um, 
a chameleon marker, that huge chameleon marker, it feels really awkward and unnatural. I was worried that these would feel that way and so far I'm not I'm not getting that sensation. I wonder if I would get um, hand fatigue faster. I don't know. So when you read about these they talk about using them for like coloring huge areas if you have to fill in a big background really fast that you could grab your Magnus pencils and use them for that purpose and save your um, standard Albrecht Durers for detail areas. That's kind of their vision. I'm trying to think what else they said. Um, the Magnus pencils are good for. Well, I can't remember now. I'm just having fun swatching these really cool pencils. <laughs> 140, 133. Oh, that's the same color right here. Let's see. Oh, these just lay down so pretty. Yep, same color. Should be. So much fun. I'm really excited to see those browns too. 219. Oh, it's a beautiful red they gave you in this set. That's one of the issues I had with the Karen Dash set. I think I mentioned that already during this live stream. I was so confused at why they gave you the reds they did in that Karen Dash set of 12. Are these the same 12 that they give you in the 12 set of polychromos? 115. I think I have that set right here. No, I think it's a little different. Yeah, it's a little different. One fifteen. I kind of wish instead of the white they gave you a gray. But I'm glad to have a white. Don't get me wrong, I wanted a white. And I guess you can mix the black and the white. <coughs> Excuse me, to get a gray. 107. Yeah, I'm liking these pencils. I wonder if it's going to feel weird to go back to a small pencil. <laughs> okay, here we get into the browns now. This is burnt ochre. Oh, it's a beautiful brown. I can color trees without doing complementary color mixes. And skin tones maybe without doing complementary color mixes. And another brown, this one's walnut brown. Ooh, he's dark. He's really dark. I wonder what he'll look like with a little water in him what his undertones are. Kind of seem purpley undertones. And now we'll see the black. Okay, here we go. Oh, everybody's commenting. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so into this. Let me check here. Um, that's about the same price the 12 set of aquarelles are going for this week. Oh, I've wanted the Magnus for a while. Oh, that's interesting. Full set is 120 colors, same color range as the polychromos. Yeah, that's for the Albrecht Durers. I think the Albrecht Durer Magnus only comes in 24 colors. Um, yeah, the Judith, I believe they should be exactly the same colors. Um, the Faber-Castell, they color match from line to line. Um, 
Anna wants to know if I'm going to be on tonight. Yes, I will. These are the ones I'm looking forward to the activation most. Me too. I'm so excited. I wish I could activate them right now. Um, let's see. Oh, they are the same colors as the 12. Very interesting. Do you have any experience with pastel? A little bit. Um, yes. Um, those colors are lovely. I think so too. I love that the FC colors match between the, yeah. Um, I think it's really cool that they color match from system to system or from line to line inside their system. Mary's here. Yay. Um, Teresa wants to know how old I am. I'm turning 46. Yeah, turning 46. <laughs> Um, I, can, I still can't I see that much of a difference the colors to account for the price so the price difference um, comes because of the size you get way more core um, so you're you're paying extra to get more um, stuff is what the the idea is here um, yeah. okay yeah all right 199 let's see what the black looks like how black is the black? Is it um, a bluish black? A grayish black? A brownish black? Is it a warm black? Cold black? We won't really know the answer to that until we activate it with water. We can kind of get a feel for the black. Seems like a really nice cold black. But really it's when you activate these with water that you start seeing the undertones come out. All right, now we're gonna see how opaque this white is. And we've been getting um, whites all over the board. Some are really translucent and some are very opaque. Oh, hello. Hello, Albrecht Durer. Look at that. That is a very opaque white. I don't know if I would say it's the most opaque white. We'll have to look back. That's pretty impressive though. Should we take a peek back? So far, we haven't done all of our whites yet. But let's take a peek. Okay. Here is the Faber-Castell Gold Faber Aqua. So the Gold Faber versus, oh yeah, it's much more opaque, the um, Albert Durer. Uh, here is the Graphitant, so technically not watercolor, it's graphite. Here is Derwent Inktense is white, technically not watercolor, Inktense. I would say, um, yeah, the, um, Albert Durer beat out ink tents on its opacity. Um, there's the white from Crayola. Look how, um, translucent that one is. This is a sad little white. Um, ooh, Karen Dash's white is pretty good. Karen Dash beats Castle Art. Let's see if Karen Dash beat... Albert Durer. Ooh, it's close, but I would say Albert Durer might be more opaque so far. Ooh, interesting. And then over here we've got Arteza's white, um, Brunzil's white, and another Brunzil's white. Definitely Albert Durer beats all of those. Interesting. I think that's my last white. Oh wait, no, we got one more contender right here. This is the Arteza Expert white. Definitely, it beats that white. Almost can't see it on camera, it's so translucent. So I would say just a general glancing test. So far the Albert Dura Magnus white is our most opaque white. So that shows you the strength of the pigment that um, they're giving us in the Albert Durer line. That's really impressive. Like I said, look at even like the lightest colors are glowing with color. That's just really impressive. 
Very cool. Okay, let's see. I'm going to check your questions. Do you have a video on the Neo Color 2s? Nope, not yet. I don't think so, at least. Um, uh, good to know. Let's see. Somebody said something. It's the same for the markers. Oh, okay. Are they waxy or oily? Um, these are watercolors, so they're a totally different binder. Um, and they, these guys are feeling really slick. Um, they go down really easy and nice. Um, I don't know how else to express that. Um, yeah, these are amazing. The Albert Durers. I'm, so far, these are my favorite um, for the feel of how they go down. So, But we have a ton of tests. I'll show you a real quick sneak peek. This is the watercolor pencil worksheet as it stands right now. I may change it before we actually do the Battle of the Watercolor. Um, pencils, but this is the test. So we have lots of tests to put these pencils through. This is just the first part is to swatch them, get a feel for them, and then we're going to activate them all with water and see how they look wet. Um, and then we'll do um, the worksheet to see um, how they score on the worksheet, and that'll be the main part of the upcoming video. So that's my my testing for today you guys um the next ones i'll be swatching probably do it off camera will be the generals i'll show you that box that's this box right here it's kind of a cool box that it came in check out this box see how it opens up folds like that opens up like that and has these trays that slide out i thought that was pretty clever for a paper box so these will be the next ones. I'm going to go from a pretty expensive line, the most expensive that I own, down to a lot more budget-friendly pencils. So it'll be interesting to feel them side by side like that. So that'll be the next ones I swatch off camera. And I'll just keep on swatching until they're all swatched. And then we can film the actual battle of the watercolor pencils, which involves this worksheet right here. So... Yep, uh, let's see. Uh, will you be doing the Neo Colors 2 with this test? I think those are more of a, a, a crayon, right? Mona, am I right? <laughs> Your nails are pretty. Thank you. They're so much fun and happy. I wanted happy nails. So that's what we get, our happy, colorful nails. <laughs> I think the Neo Colors 2 are more like a water soluble crayon as opposed to a pencil. So these are more, this battle will involve pencils more than crayons, is kind of the idea. So, yeah. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining me. Make sure you give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this fun little live stream. Remember to join me tonight for our regularly scheduled weekly Wednesday live event. Mona says yes. Yeah, those um, I kind of made the divide for this upcoming um, video into categories. So we're doing the pencils um, for this battle. And I did do a battle of the water soluble crayons a few months ago. You could go check that out, Mona. I'm not sure. I think there were some Karen Dash pen, um, crayons in there. So go check that out, okay? And see if your the Neo colors were in there. I can't remember if they were or not. Anyway, okay, you guys are fantastic. And I hope you all have a safe day and stay healthy and take good care of each other, okay? And we'll see you guys tonight. Bye-bye, everybody.